Uh, hi everybody, I'm Peter from My Irish Jeweller and today we are very lucky to have a lady called Margot who's all the way from Donegal and she's going to teach us how to make a St. Bridget's Cross. It's done so in a very special, clever way and uh, let's hope that uh, we can all learn the process. Margot. Okay. Thanks Peter. Okay, I will start off by bringing you through the first couple of uh, moves, if you like, or stages, because it's all about repetition. So if you master it on the first four rushes, you're in business. If you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, fumble away and try and keep up. <laughs> all right, because we won't be stopping. Okay, so two rushes, one in the left hand, one in the right. Okay, you bring the one in the right hand behind Okay, and you bring it forward like so, and now you're looking at a T, yeah. I hope. Yeah. Peter, you keep it as nice and neat and taut as you possibly can. Okay. Ooh, look, the next, <laughs> yes, either that rush shouldn't be waddling, Peter. The next one you take in your right hand, you bring it in front of the T, and you bring it around to the left. All right. No. Okay, excellent. Now, with your right hand, first finger and thumb, you hold that in position. And you turn the whole thing 90 degrees. Look at that. Simple. You then take your left hand and you use your left hand then to keep everything in place. Okay. Now, I trust yours is looking a little bit like this. Right, okay. Next rush. <laughs> you know that very good. I it's very know bad. you're going to need a couple of lessons, but it's not a bad start. <laughs> Next one in your right hand, you place it in front, and with your thumb on the heart of it, you bring it around to the left. And now you have your four arms of your cross. <laughs> Ninety degrees. You turn it and you hold on to the last one that you've put in place. Now you have four arms of your cross. Fabulous. I can see it. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the next right. one, again, take it in your right hand. Oh, oh, oh. Of course, I'm assuming, I'm assuming everybody's right handed here. <laughs> you uh, put it in front and you bring it around to the left. Use your thumb and forefinger to keep it in place. And you do your 90 degrees and you hold on to the last rush that you've put in place. And now you're beginning to see it take shape. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yes. dear. It's, it is a little bit tricky. I do, I do admit tricky. that. Okay. So next rush in your right hand, bring it in front of what you've got and underneath that lovely little middle that's beginning to appear. I bring it around to the left, 90 degrees, and you're holding on to the last <laughs> Peter, it's like a demented spider. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> the next one, you bring oh, it and you put it underneath now what is the heart of the Bridges Cross. You bring it around to the left, you do your 90 degrees and you hold on to the last rush that you've put in place. Okay, let's take a little look. Can you see the, the beginning of it there, Kieran? Beginning to. I can. Okay. Absolutely. How, how's yours looking there? Uh, what would yes. you give that out? Now, what would you give that out? Okay. Uh? Well, okay. At this point, yeah. uh, I would say maybe well. six. Six. Peter. Uh, Peter. Okay. I'm looking for a one. Yes, okay. Yeah, you can have a one. I give you a one. <laughs> Oh, wow. A natural. We have a natural. Okay. All right. The next rush. Oh, no. We take. <laughs> He's supposed to. You're, Why not falling apart? You're enjoying this, aren't you? Now, it goes underneath that lovely heart. It goes around to the left, 90 degrees. And there we go. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, beginning to take you. Lovely. Thank you. Now, the next rush goes underneath, goes around to the left, 90 degrees, and we hold on to the end. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what would have happened, um, well, what, about 60 odd years ago, 
uh, in Ireland uh, when the tradition was very much alive. Uh, it still is in parts of the country, but not as widespread as it was, unfortunately. Uh, in houses like ours, uh, the rosary would have been said every evening at half past seven. It didn't matter who was there, who wasn't there, or what was on the radio, no television. Um, the rosary got said. And on the eve of Bridget's Day, which is the 31st of January, when uh, Bridget was uh, reputed to travel the country, uh, the tradition of making crosses um, and other uh, rituals to do with Bridget happened in the houses. Uh, earlier in the day, my mother would have gone uh, out and she would have collected the rushes. And after the rosary was said, she would get up, go out to where she had stored them in the shed and come back and knock three times on the door like that. St. Bridget uh, is here, let me come in. And we would say, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Then one of us would get up, let her in, and she would come in with an armful of rushes, throw them on the table like this, and we would spend the evening making Bridget's crosses. Uh, the story of how the Bridget's cross came to, to be in the first place uh, goes back to Saint Bridget. Now we have to remember that prior to Saint Bridget in pre-Christian times there was Bridget the goddess and there were rituals, pagan rituals, uh, around uh, worshipping Bridget the goddess and uh, she was worshipped on the 1st of February which was the celebration of Imbolg and Imbolg was one of the four uh, celebrations to mark the seasons in pre-Christian times. Um, the goddess Bridget was part of a tribe known as the Tuatha de Danann and uh, she was the daughter of the Dagda and the Dagda was the main god of the Tuatha. Um, when Christianity came to Ireland, uh, what happens in any civilization is that 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 the conquering uh, religion or power uh, basically takes the traditions and alters them and makes their own of it. So uh, that's how the Bridget's Cross came to be. Uh, our Saint Bridget, they say she was born in Fockert in uh, Dundalk, outside Dundalk, in uh, 432. Uh, she was reputed to be the daughter of a chief, a great Irish chieftain, um, who uh, basically um, she was heading for a life of um, sort of wealth, but she decided she didn't want any part of it, and she set about doing good works and basically um, becoming what uh, what the the person that w that we. Uh, except as being Saint Bridget. Uh, the cross was used by Bridget to explain Christianity and to explain uh, the passion, if you like, of Christ to a dying chieftain. That's, that's the tradition, that's how the story goes. Um, and it's interesting that in parts of the country, there is another cross that is made uh, that has three arms instead of four. And that's a symbol that goes right across uh, Celtic civilization. If you think of uh, the Isle of Man has a three uh, armed uh, symbol. Um, and uh, also in Scotland, the same, you find it, the, the, the tradition, the same. Uh, the Bridget figure uh, is found all across Northern Europe. Okay, so um, the tradition is still very, very strong in parts of the country, mainly Donegal, I have to say, uh, and parts of West Cork and Kerry. This cross must be made on the eve of Bridget's Day. It must be made fresh every year. 
it literally loses its power uh, on the 31st of uh, the year, the, the end of the year it's made. And it is a protector. Bridget was uh, associated with uh, plenty. She was associated with fertility. She was associated with spring and rebirth, etc. So to have this in your house, you are guaranteed to never have to worry about starvation, uh, fire. Uh, you will always have bread on the table. And as you can see, the final rush goes in a little bit like this, so that we finish it off very nicely and we don't end up with a disaster. <laughs> Not that there are any disasters around this table. Now, <laughs> here we go. Yes, fantastic. Okay, so there we are. Crush, crush, Beautiful. Okay. Thank now there are, much, I'm not finished, oh. <laughs> there are different ways of finishing off your Bridget's Cross. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, uh, some people will, will use elastic bands, others will, I will just trim it first uh, and show you how to do that. Um, we get the elastic band on. Now you have to remember that as the year goes on, these rushes will wither. A Bridget's Cross at the end of its life is beige. It's not green. It doesn't hold its color. These rushes will wither. And when it comes to uh, you making the, uh, the next one, uh, this one must either be burned mm. or put into the thatch, whichever is handiest. The thatched roof. The thatched roof. So I, I, I would imagine you will probably uh, burn yours. Mm. Anyway, when I was young, we did put it in the thatch mm. because we did have a thatched house mm. and we did have no running water or no electricity until I was about 17. And people think that that was hardship. Not at all. It was not. It was a fine way to live. Okay, and then what we do is we put a nice little knot in it. And as you can see, rushes were used for an awful lot of other things apart from a Bridget's Cross. As you can see, they are very pliable, flexible. Baskets were made from rushes. Okay, so there we go. Oh, so beautiful. you follow suit. It's wonderful. And this so. one, I think, will, when I finish it, I think it'll look very well up here, won't it? For a year. For a year. <laughs> and then next year, Peter, you will have perfected the art. Uh, absolutely. I'm going to practice. I'm going to practice, practice right. every night. Thank you very much. Here, here. Very well done. Uh, and Peter, I believe you've got a little presentation to make. To I do. I do. As a, as oh, a oh. recognition of our lesson, oh, oh, oh. we'd like to present Goodness. you with... One of the My Irish Jeweler, oh, Sterling that Silver. That is brilliant. Now, oh, uh, thank that you very is much. so gorgeous. Oh, and thank this one, you very this one much. you'll see, just to take it out and show yes. it to you, it's not on the front only, but you see authentically oh, wow. it's made both sides. That just is like because, so. yeah, I've seen them before. And, and they've been flat on the back. Absolutely. That is gorgeous. And I'm so glad that you didn't model it. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Margo. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, that is lovely. Genuinely <laughs> fabulous. That's gorgeous. Okay. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, I hope you've learned a lot from Margot and that, please God, you too will be making your own St. Bridget's Crosses. Thank you.